I'm ready to get this thing on the road. Let's accept the challenge. As usual, we got a lot of them. Over 50 challenges right now. Daniel Cormier, I'm uh, playing a UFC legend. <laughs> Good luck to you. You're the first opponent for today. Uh, opens with C4. Let's play B6. I've been playing quite a few flank setups lately. So let's keep it going with B6. I actually lost a really bad game in the English. I was on the white side of the English. Um, back in mm, maybe 2018 over the board to a grandmaster. And my opponent played this, this line. So, okay, let's play knight c6. I, I tend to think with white having this kind of weakness in the center of these pawns that this is nice for black. But we'll see how this shapes up. Greetings to all our viewers on both Twitch and YouTube. That's right, we're on both platforms. I think we're definitely on YouTube. Okay, and I just refle uh, refreshed Twitch, and we are live on Twitch as well. Very good. I panicked for a second because I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> All right, G3. So if Bishop C yeah, let's play Bishop C5. This gives White an opportunity for this move if uh, Daniel wants. But doesn't play it. Yeah, I guess it didn't work because take, take, D4, take, there was Knight F3. So no center fork trick there. Uh, now there could be. There could be. But let's just continue with Knight F6. I would assume White's going to castle. Greetings to Potless Flower. Also, happy accident. Boom shakalaka. It says, greetings to Minnesota from Berlin. Thank you for tuning in from Berlin, Germany, I assume. Could be Berlin somewhere else. Uh, Doc Wop, thanks for subbing to the Lee Chess channel. Three months from Doc Wop. Yes, hope we get a game as well. Let's go D6 just to take a bit of a burden off of the night. And our YouTube viewers, awesome to see. Uh, Kirill asks, are you doing rated or casual? I am accepting both rated and casual challenges, as always. So if you want a free shot at my rating, you can do so. Be advised, though, if you're of a certain rating as well, you might be taking a risk with it. But yeah, you can challenge either way. The only rule of Lee Chess plays is it has to be 3-0. has to be 3-0 standard chess. No variants, nothing tricky. No uh, position setups where, like, black is moving first. <laughs> oh, thank you, Steve W. says, Hi, John, your Lee Chess Berserk video was a great watch. Yes, I just posted that to my personal channel. And it was really fun. I played in a Lee Chess arena yesterday where I, I late joined by, like, I don't know, seven minutes or something. And I was ber berserking every single game. And I was inspired because of the... Uh, the titled arena, which took place yesterday on Lee Chess. Did you guys watch that? How many of you guys watched the Lee Chess titled arena yesterday? It was a blast to watch, let me tell you. Let's go H4. I think he's going to challenge with Bishop E3. I just get that vibe. It was an absolute pleasure to watch. Uh, I am I am Min Lei, soon to be Grandmaster, so you could call him Grandmaster-elect Min Lei, won the tournament. And Hikaru also played and even streamed the tournament as well. So that was highly unexpected. And those two guys, like, down the stretch in the event, uh, it was real exciting. I mean, Min built up an incredible lead at the beginning. He won his first 22 games. First 22 games in a row. Remember, this is the title arena. So he's playing all title players in bullet. And he was just running through people like uh, they weren't even standing there. Definitely one of the most impressive performances streak of games I've ever seen. Uh, and Hikaru, to his credit, I mean, as Hikaru does, made it very competitive down the stretch. Was within about 10 points of him, but Min was able to hold him off and win the tournament. Okay, I'm so tempted to go for this here. I don't think I quite have uh, the facilities for it. You don't have the facilities for that, big man. <laughs> Um, here, take, take runs into G4. So let's go, uh, let's go G6 first. Oh, you saw the commentary on my channel, says Jan. Thank you. Yes, yes, I did, uh, broadcast that yesterday. I did some commentary for about the last hour of yesterday's arena. Oh, you just watched it, Ahmad? Ah, uh, Nice. Watched Eric Rosen play it. Yes, shout out to Eric. He was also streaming that. 
feel like I should take that knight because my bishop's pretty buried. And let's go f4. I'm going to try to... S oh, that was a big mistake on my part. I shouldn't have even said that. That was a huge mistake, guys. Hold on. I, I, I think I gave that away. I don't know if Daniel's... Oh, but he, he blunders right back. He blundered it back. <laughs> he caught me. My sense of danger was lacking there. Now I'm going to win. I'm not even going to take the queen yet. <laughs> Huge turn of events. Well, there we go. We got our queen blunder out of our system early. Uh, thank you for the game, Daniel. Let's see how bad that was. What was the damage here? F4 just walked right into it. Walked right. That's a slight danger you take when you uh, weaken your light squares. You see all the pawns on dark squares? That always means the other color, color complex, the light squares in this case, are going to be weak. Wow, that's wild that it's not that bad. And I think it's because the knight is coming to f4. So check this out. Yeah, black's better here. King b8, the engine wisely recommends just tucking the uh, king away. Yeah, it's not that terrible because let's say white plays the best move, king e1, to avoid any forks. Uh, I can send the knight in or play queen takes h3. Let's just say I send the knight in. Attack here, here. Take, take with the king to keep this rook protected. It's kind of bizarre, but yeah, I mean, this is black. Despite black being down a knight, white's coordination is not great. The knight is dominant. The g-pawn's dangerous. I think in, in a time scramble, anything could happen here. Maybe it's even easier to play black in this position. Rook h2, g2. So who knows? So you shouldn't feel that bad about that, Daniel. Interesting game. Thank you. So yeah, this was the English where I played b6. Maybe you should have stopped me from playing h5. Like, I probably would have played h4 here. Although that does give the g4 square, to be fair. What did I also think? Maybe, like, bishop e3 somewhere. Trying to attack the, uh, the bishop. That seemed logical to me as well. All right. Eventful first game. Thank you very much. Let's keep going. We're going for two hours, guys. So get your challenges in now. You don't think it was really Daniel Cormier, the UFC champ? You never know. You never know. Is Cormier the, the guy? Uh, hello to my opponent, by the way. I think he's a heavyweight, right? And he has, like, real knockout power. He's been around in, in the UFC for quite a while. He's a commentator now? Ah, okay. So he might be retired. I'm pretty sure I saw him in a fight somewhat recently. Okay, let's go back here. So white can recover the pawn if they want. I'm playing this like a like a Rubenstein, even though it was a winner where to start. Sebastian asks, can I play with you? You can definitely send a challenge. I can't make any guarantees. I'm accepting challenges randomly, but definitely feel free to send one. Let's go here. Sometimes white throws in a check on uh, B5, by the way. Yeah, he's also talking about fighting again, heavyweight. Got it. Okay. C5, challenge the center. Maybe I'll even play queen d5, threaten mate. The knight looks a little misplaced here. Nothing major. Okay, now I can't win a pawn, or can I? I actually might be able to win that pawn. Let's take first. If he takes back, then I have more reinforcement of the d4 square. I was thinking, let's say white takes on d4 right now. It doesn't trade on f6. Queen takes, uh, knight takes. I could actually just take with a bishop or even the queen. So I think that was checking out. Okay, so he goes c4. Let's go here. Some pressure here and here. I'm threatening to take and eventually win this pawn. Hello, Lou. Hey, John, I recently saw that your Twitter bio buyer says ex co-founder of Chessable. Are you not with Chessable now? Well, I just put that in there to make it clear that I don't have anything to do with Chessable management anymore. We sold the company back in 2019. So, yeah, I just want people to be clear on that. I'm still a content creator for Chessable. I still have courses on there. I'm on the site every day. But people occasionally message me and often ask like technical questions about like how Chessable works or what do I think of various things. And it's... uh 
not something I have any control of at this point. <laughs> they have their own executive team and management employees. Uh, let's go queen c7, or should I push e4? e4 takes rook e8 is kind of interesting. I'm intrigued by this line. That might actually be good. Yeah, let's do this. Because this rook is undefended. I mean, maybe white can capture, take king f2, but I gotta imagine I have an edge in that resulting position. So I'm giving back a pawn. If queen c2, by the way, I have plan d3. That's a nice move to cut the coordination. <laughs> That's funny, Destroya. Yes, I am still a co-founder. Once a co-founder, always a co-founder. It's kind of awkward wording, right? But yeah, I just wanted uh, it to be clear. The good player is always lucky. Yeah, I assume you're talking about that last game, King Berserk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens sometimes. Okay, so take. I don't see any problem with just recapturing, though. This is sufficiently defended. We can pre-move the capture. It's a free pre-move. Hello, Bakus. All right. Uh, D3. D3, rook takes E8. I can take on C2. I think that checks out. Let's go for it. I feel pretty sharp. I've been playing a lot of chess lately, guys. Blitz, bullet, streaming quite a bit. I feel pretty good at the moment. Let's give a check. Aside from that blunder of the queen in the last game. <laughs> Just ignore that. Let's come down. Mm, I guess I'll take here. This is covered. So there's no check. Oh, thank you, CD Jazz. What's up, CD Jazz? Shout out to you, by the way. All right, let's go down. Could take this one, but I'm just going to get the rook in position. Should I do a windmill? Take? Is there a windmill mate? I don't think so. I don't think there's a checkmate there. Ah, uh, maybe. Ah, uh, ooh, guys. Buckle up. I see something. I planted the seed, so I feel like I have to follow through. I mean, bishop takes g2 was also totally winning there, but... Okay, now check. Discovery. Check. We're going to get a bishop mate, I think. And now this bishop comes in. Bishop g2, very nice coordination here. Thank you, honor guy, for the game. Yeah, that was looking rough, I would say... After C takes D4, seems like you might just be losing a pawn here. Maybe you have some small compensation, but it doesn't look like it's enough. Yeah, at first I thought this was dangerous because of the alignment here. You always got to look at bishop h7 operations. But the reality is if you take, I can, I can probably take back either way because now the queen is defended. Oh, that was you, Nainaka, in the last game? Nice. Were you, were you stream sniping just out of curiosity? Not that I care one way or the other, but uh, with Bishop H3, my I didn't have a poker face at that moment. I knew I blundered right after <laughs> I played F4 in that game, and I gave it away. All right, thank you for the game, Honor Guy. Yeah, I think your opening's fine. Probably just need to rethink uh, maybe a bit about where you're placing the pieces. I actually think Bishop B5 checks an annoying move to throw in for Black because... Here I can't even play c6, so if I play bishop d7, a lot of times they go back now and they kind of claim that the bishop is misplaced. It's not on this long diagonal. suppose I can still play here, though. Um, so maybe that's something you could think about. I mean, even here, like queen a4 check, as the engine suggesting, is an attempt to, again, try to get black to play c6 or some other undesirable move. There's no more question mark on the Scandi in Lee Chess. Oh, I got to check that out. We'll, uh, we'll make a point to play a Scandinavian. Okay, Malarami, good luck to you. 1,500. Do you have any other ratings? Okay, your uh, rapid rating is 1,853. Small sample size, though. Good luck to you. 
Let's play an Italian game. What time control? We we are playing 3-0. 3 plus 0, rated or blitz. If we already play, can I challenge? Can you challenge me again? Yes, you can send another challenge, even if we've already played. Some people get very lucky and even get two games in a stream. All right, this, this line's not the most exciting. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to try to spice it up somehow. I feel like the top players know the ins and outs of these C3, D3 variations quite uh, seriously. I can't claim to, but... I know some themes. I know some ideas. Yeah, this is all pretty standard. Um, let's play H3. Shout out to our mods, by the way, if they happen to be here. Um, I think now I should probably take. I think it might be a good moment to capture. I'm not really worried about bishop takes H3. That would not be sound. Okay, okay. B4, perhaps? D4? Du, 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 nah. Well, maybe, maybe. Let's see where he goes. Because I always wonder about B4, B5 with going after the E5 pawn. Sometimes that can be possible. Yes, shout out to the mods. Numeroid is often in the chat. Lopare. No joke chess, of course. Shout out to them all. Black has a pretty aggressive and I'd say logical setup otherwise, so I'm going to try to prove like maybe this is loose. In fairness, my b5 pawn might be undefended, but we'll see what happens. I, I see a potential c4 fork if black ever plays queen takes b5. It's a bit messy. I mean, I got to watch myself on this diagonal too. I might go a4 even as well at some stage. Like I could play a4 right now would be interesting. Definitely this is a critical line though. Um, I don't know. Let's let's see what Black does. I am curious if Black's gonna bite bite on the B five pawn. Do I play Title Tuesdays? You know, I haven't played Title Tuesday for quite a while, but I have in the past. You can find lots of videos on my personal channel where I play there. Yeah, so Black doesn't take. I think Black got a bit nervous about C four. So now I'm up a pawn. I think knight c4 makes a lot of sense here. Uh, I'm just looking for tricks. I'm not seeing any. Let's go. Let's try to win one of the bishops back. Maybe I'll get both bishops. This is a nice bishop to, to knock out. I think uh, black's pressure here is pretty significant. However, queen c5, that's not a battery I'm exactly afraid of. Because I've got f2 defended. So I'm going to hold off on taking the bishop. Because when you have a knight attacking a bishop like that, you can capture it at any moment. Ooh, I actually had bishop a3 on the previous move. I'm still going to do it. I had it on the, the last move, though. Would have been much stronger. Thoughts on Magnus win today in uh, Croatia? Yeah, you know, I got to admit, I haven't been following the Grand Chess Tour very much. I just checked the standings very briefly, but I'm going to look at the games probably early this week. Vintage Magnus, though, you know, he announces his retirement from the World Championship cycle and just casually wins against some of the best players in the world anyways. Okay, let's take here now. This knight is hanging, but first I'm going to capture the bishop. Am I planning any OTB tournaments in the future? I have no plans for OTB. I've really been thinking about it. I don't think I'm quite ready yet. It's something I would like to get back into, but I want to do it purposefully. I don't really want to, I don't have much interest in just playing a one-off tournament at this moment. And especially if it's like a long tournament, I'd be much more likely to play a, a weekend event or something. But yeah, I haven't given up on my GM quest. I'm 35 years old. I'm going on 36 this September. So, uh, Father time is undefeated, as they say. I'm definitely feeling the um, the clock, the life clock, start to tick a little bit. Not so much in terms of uh, like my abilities, I would say, strangely, but just like where I want to be in the coming years. You know, I would like to have a family, have kids someday. 
So like I, I start to think about what that time lad would look like if I were to seriously pursue Grandmaster. And I know in theory it might be possible to to pursue those things and pursue GM, but I think it would be really, really difficult. So if I do come back to tournament chess, I'm going to make sure I make a hard push within a certain window. Okay, I'm looking for a mate here. I don't know if I'm going to get the mate before time expires. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get the mate. So we'll just play some moves. We'll go from there. Watch out for Rosen traps. Because I fell into a Rosen trap very similar to this recently. And it was not fun. Okay. Actually, just yesterday, I fell into a classic Rosen trap. With Black also only having an A5 pawn. <laughs> Thanks for the game, Melorami. Yeah, let's see that moment where I go after the pawn on E5. Because I think you got to go for that queen takes B5 line. Okay. Yeah, this is the one downside of the early D5, by the way. So in, in theory, this advance is pretty desirable, and it often does work. However, there are some circumstances where you can lack a defender of E5. So you might want to think about prefacing it with like rook F8 on occasion. Yeah, and it looks like in this exact position, the engine does approve of B4. However, you could play bishop d6, come back and guard. That's interesting. As played, I thought you pretty much had to try your luck with this line. I know that looks like a blunder after this. But the thing is, you always have this bishop d4 move. I just don't know where you should put your queen. Engine says this. I know that looks kind of scary. Rook b1. But I think the point is you're going to counterattack my knight at some point. That trap yesterday was brilliant. Yeah, it really was. It was a game I was playing on chess.com, but I might post it on my social media because it was a classic Rosen trap. It was against an NM who uh, clearly was a, an Eric Rosen acolyte, an Eric Rosen disciple. All right, thanks for the game. Appreciate it, Malarami. Good one. Mouse Lover, you are up. You have the white pieces. Good luck to you. We've never played before. How many GM norms do you have, and have you already achieved the 2,500 feet day? I have one GM norm. Are you there, Mouse Lover? Okay, we're going to have to abort. You can always challenge later if you are AFK. I lost to an eight-year-old. Nice. Yeah, I have one GM norm. My current feed day rating, I think, is 2446, so like mid-2400s. And I have not achieved the uh, 2500 peak in the past. I have not. Let's go here. I think my peak fee day was in the high 2470s. Something like that. Ah, uh, no, this is a classic trap. Check. This is on every tactics puzzle out there, or, or set of tactics puzzles. The loose piece subject to the check from the queen. It's very often a knight. Could be a bishop. Let's not blunder our queen here. Yeah, so... Be very careful about moving minor pieces into your opponent's half of the board. You have to be very skeptical of that, especially if they're unsupported, if they're undefended. Because things like that can happen. Now, do not play bishop g4. Okay. Black did not play that. Now black's playing reasonable chess. Stabilizing a little bit. Thank you, CD Jazz. You are always very supportive. And I appreciate that. I have some ideas. I have some ideas about how... Um, I could pursue Grandmaster and make it interesting, interactive for people to follow. Because honestly, like that would be probably my major motivation at this point. Like I want to make Grandmaster myself, but I don't think my life is going to change based on having the title or not. It, it's at this point something I'd love to uh, share with people and people, especially who've like supported me in chess over the years, like share the journey of it. But if you guys watch Levy, you know how difficult that is like it's a very hard thing to pursue and also like make content out of i have some ideas though um that would still like in theory give me a legit chance while also be able to to share things along the way Ooh, and now this is a big time fork let's go for the check now you gotta go here otherwise this is gonna be mate yeah checkmate thank you i lost to an eight-year-old for the game 
Hard to recover from that one, that wayward night there. So this is the Queen's Gambit accepted. And after e4, the two best moves for black, in my opinion, are either e5, counterattacking move in the center, looking for this, which is not any better for white, or knight f6. Knight f6 gets a lot of play, which kind of reminds me of like an alipin. You attack the pawn on e4, you try to uh, encourage it to go forward. And there's a bunch of theory here. So in my opinion, those are the ways to go. But yes, can't, uh, can't recover from a move like knight b4. Losing that piece, at least against a strong player. So watch those minor piece moves into the opponent's half of the board. Thank you for the game. Who's up next? Skid. Good luck to Skid. Let's play another d4 in this one. Is it to make videos while you're at tournaments? That seemed pretty rough going for Levy. Yeah, I don't think I would do that. I, I think probably the only way I would do that, in theory, this is all in theory because, you know, I'm, I don't cr have current plans to do this. I think you can really only feasibly manage that if it's one round per day. And ideally, a lot of the uh, logistical work is like offloaded to someone else. I actually mentioned this when I was on Levy's podcast with him several months ago. Like I thought for him, in his situation, it would make sense for someone to like almost take over his channel for, you know, the five days, six days, whatever it takes to play a tournament and either do the recaps, have some content flowing um, in his place or at least take some of the logistical stuff off his hands. Because, yeah, I mean, recaps for two rounds per day is a lot. But I think one round per day you can do it. I mean, we saw Hikaru do it at the uh, FIDE Grand Prix, and the candidates for that matter. He did it effectively, but he's Hikaru. Um, I remember playing the London Chess Classic back in 2015, and I also made recaps. So and I, I remember that being, like, feasible. But realistically, I think it's best if you're not making the recaps yourself and you have someone uh, that you trust, that you know can provide a lot of value to the viewers, who can take over that responsibility for the event and still create a lot of like hype and interest and allow people to, to follow. Maybe you like relay some comments briefly to them right after the game is played and they make the video and they do the recap. Let's take. I don't see why not taking this pawn, so let's go for it. Oh, thank you, Defuser. The secret is to keep growing your beard until you get the title. Ah, yes, the Amon Hamilton approach. I just, I just trimmed my beard today, so I'm already failing in that regard. <laughs> um, let's go here. Now, black can do this and try to bite on the A2 pawn, but then I have the, uh, the fisher Spassky idea B3. Were you ever an NM? <laughs> yes, I was. I was an NM. That's a funny question. I was, in fact, an NM at one point. <laughs> Hello, Richard Beasley. Good to see you. What is my favorite movie? The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. That is my favorite movie of all time. It's got a killer soundtrack as well. Um, I want to go Bishop F7 because I have this little fork idea, but the problem is Black's going to insert this move. So I think knight e5 first makes sense. Um, yeah, just a little move order switcheroo. It doesn't win anything. Black can go here. But uh, let's do this. Should I try to win this in highly technical style? I don't know. Let's go h5. h6 now. Can also maybe take here. I don't, nah, I don't know that taking actually works. Hmm. H6 or F4. Those are the options. Let's go F4. We'll try to keep the tension a little bit. Prop up the knight. Ooh, and this walks into E4. Now, I want to get this right. I want to get it correct. Let's give a check first. Let's see where that king goes. I 
I just want black to commit with their king. Mm, that might not have been the right move, actually, now that I think about it. Because black's going to go knight g3. It's the only move. Black could have gone to uh, f6 to defend this pawn. I thought I had something where I could play knight takes g6 eventually. Now, rook h3 would be a really bad idea because of knight e2. So I'm going to take here. This might actually turn out the way that I had in mind. And now this move. Now this one. Because if take, black's not going to stop the h pawn, so black can't capture. Now let's give a check. We're going to go after some pawns. And can I trap the, uh, the knight in? I think I can. Look at that. G4, we got, a, we got a barrier. We have a nice wall here, and I can just walk over and win the knight. Or just keep pushing the pawns, for that matter. Stop king e6. Let's move the, the barrier up. A knight trapping another knight. That is tasty. Yes, that is tasty, isn't it? Oh, hello. Good to see you. Former student of mine. Thank you. Good to hear from you. That's one nice thing about being a chess teacher. Your students often stay in the game for a long time. Even if you don't uh, take lessons for a while, it's fun to track them and uh, see what they're up to. So good to see you, Nabil. Thanks for the game. Yeah, I think, I think the capture on D5, so the pawn on D5 was just a little bit too loose. So maybe E5, not the best move. Although, in fairness, you could have actually thrown in bishop takes h6, so maybe my move order wasn't the best. Maybe I should take here first. See if the engine agrees. Yeah, bishop takes g7. Better move order. Because if you had thrown in this, I take, then take here, and you've got that sufficiently protected. It's a little bit scary. A lot of times, black doesn't like to do that, but I don't think h5 is going to work. You also have knight g4 on the cards, so you can probably kick my queen out if necessary. Was knight takes h6 not possible? Let's see. At which moment? Oh. Whoa. Yeah, it was. Bleh. <laughs> backward knight move. How often are backward knight moves missed? I know I miss them frequently. Yeah, that move is totally possible. <laughs> Both of us blanked on it, apparently. Only GoBetty in the chat saw it. Only go Betty. Oh, also King Berserk on YouTube saw it. And maybe someone else? Philip? Yeah, H6 was a terrible move by me. I should do this right away. I got fancy, but I should just do this. Oh, you know what is important here? Black can't actually take because I just pushed through. And the knight and the pawn are guarding these squares. I didn't see that. This is made in five, evidently. That's funny. So h6, uh, not, not a uh, memorable in-between move. Not one of the most memorable in-between moves I've played. Well, it might be memorable, but not for the right reason. Yeah, and I thought here, king f6 also made some sense. But now that I see that, this is clearly the best move. Okay, thanks for the game. Appreciate it, Nabil. Okay, Wilbury. Wilbury, you are up. You have very consistent ratings throughout here. Okay, let's let's put this to the test. You guys said that the Lee Chess auto analysis does not give the Scandinavian a dubious mark anymore. I need to see this for myself. So we're going to see it after the game. I'm going to play a Queen A5 Scandi. This is right in my wheelhouse. All right, very strategic line by White. Let's try to play it kind of aggressively. I'm going to go here and Knight C6. Often I play Pawn C6, but this is interesting too. Yep, castle. Uh, let's go e5. Okay, okay. Let's see if white wants to kick me with g4. Also, I don't think it would have been a bad idea to play queen h5. That's maybe what I should have done instead with this particular move order. Queen e1. Mm, tricky, tricky. All right, let's go here. So evidently, he's trying to escape this pin, but he's torn. He or she is torn about playing g4. So white is refraining from playing this right now.
you saw it, but you presumed you saw something further. Is that you, Nabil, on YouTube? Talking about Night Takes H6? Okay, let's take now. I'm going to capture and go Knight D4. A test for Wilbury. Never believe your opponent, you know? Uh, let's play h5. White has the two bishops, but they're not super active at the moment. Okay, knight e4. My queen is under attack. I think I'm going to go centralize it. Do you have chess hustlers in your public parks? Do you play them? You know, where I live in Minneapolis, we I've never seen just like a park player, uh, let alone a hustler. Uh, when I was younger, there were a few places around here where occasionally you'd see people like gather and play chess, like at a coffee house or something. But um, it's kind of sad. I haven't seen that for a long time. But there are places where that, that occurs for sure. Uh, when I used to live in New York, that was a very common occurrence. Union Square, Washington Square Park. Yeah, you would see them frequently. They're out there every day. And there's many other places around the world, too, where that occurs. Okay, I'm going to give White the e5 pawn if White wants it. I just don't really want to think about it anymore. <laughs> Great reasoning. I want to play like bishop d6 with tempo, something along those lines. White doesn't take it, though. So, all right, now I got to play f6 because this was under attack. Why leave NY? Well, I was living there over 10 years ago now, and um, I was teaching a lot in schools at, at that time. That's when I started doing chess full-time, so I was about, yeah, I was about 24, 25, and I was living with two of my friends. Um, it was really fun. I made a lot of connections, had a great time there, but I started doing a lot more work online, and it didn't really make sense to pay New York rent and, <laughs> you know, primarily teach online. So that was definitely an impetus for, should I create the bathtub structure for moving? Now we're going to win because we have the bathtub structure. What about you guys? Do you guys live somewhere where people play chess outdoors or in parks? Other hustlers around. Let's pre move this capture. It's a free pre move. How old are you? I am 35. Sneaky, sneaky. All right. Could be a good move. Let me think how I want to respond. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go here. Now there's some trickiness. If here, I think I can take this one. All right, b4 might be good. Might be good mo a good move. Yeah, that, has, that actually might be a strong move. Okay, I think I got to give him one of the kingside pawns. It's still kind of dangerous to take, though, because what if I go here now? Let's do that. Watch out for rook takes g3. Not that, not that white can avoid it at this point, but we use the pin. Yes, Wilbury is playing well. This is not easy. The time is catching up with both of us, but this is not easy. Winnipeg, Canada. Wow. CD Jazz. Let's just bring this over again. Okay, and Wilbury resigns. Yeah, dropping that bishop was tough. Time was uh, really starting to tick down there, wasn't it? You know, I feel like you're kind of close to equalizing. Maybe queen takes e5. I did offer you that pawn there, but you didn't take it. Yeah, looks like you can capture. Maybe a bit passively played by you in the opening. I'm not sure a queen e1 is necessary, to be honest, because e4 I don't think is yet a threat because of rook e1. So maybe you could improve somewhere right around there. But overall, yeah, solid game on your part. That was good. Very good. Here, the engine gives you an edge. Probably bishop e3 is a mistake, huh? Because of this capture. Yeah. 
Let's just see a little bit later. Uh, even here too. G6, it didn't approve of the bathtub creation. The engine does not approve. It says take first and then play bishop f7. Uh-huh. You know, that makes sense because then uh, the whole rook g8 eventual operation isn't as effective with both or with one pair of rooks off the board. Also, so when you did it in the game, this is a key difference here, guys. F5. Uh, what did I want to say? There was a line I was thinking of. Oh, no, here. If take, take rook d1. Ah, it doesn't work yet, though. What, what line was it? I can't quite rem remember which line I was thinking of. But there was some variation where bishop takes f2 could happen. But yeah, I think as played, probably winning the g3 pawn is uh, a key moment. Okay, thanks for the game. Let's keep rolling here. Mustafa, good luck to you. We have not played before. Let's play in English. Oh, I, I didn't check the dubious. Oh, thank I, I just saw you guys write that. I forgot to do it. We'll, we'll go back and look at it in a second if Mustafa's not here. Which Mustafa is not. Okay, let's take a look at that real quickly. Yes, I am curious. So the Lee Chess auto analysis used to give D5 a dubious mark, and looks like that has been rectified. Praise be. Praise be. Lee Chess came to their senses. They removed the dubious mark from D5 on move one in the auto analysis. And next, we have to check it for the Dutch, because the Dutch also had that distinction. <laughs> it may move the, the evaluation from plus 0.3 to plus 0.8, but it did not get a dubious mark. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and here I should have played queen h5. That would have been good. I forgot that that was one of the key things in this variation, and then you can threaten this or this. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next game. Hey, Riemann, good luck to you. Riemann hypothesis. Let's play a Sicilian. I will try a Dutch, though, at some point when someone plays d4 against me because we need to check that as well. What do you guys think is the like the objectively sketchiest move Black can play on move one that Lee Chess may not tag as dubious? What do you think it is? Like if you go e4, f5, or e4, h5 or something, I'm pretty sure it's going to give a question mark or dubious. d4, e5? Oh yeah, we should check that one. We should definitely check the England Gambit. Hey, what's up, Pizza Racer? Thank you very much your kind words. Watch out for the fork, Riemann. I'm sure Riemann sees it. Do you think if Nepo or Ding wins the championship, it is tarnished because they didn't go through Magnus? I wouldn't say tarnished, no. I mean, it's still going to be a legit world championship, but everyone's going to be wondering what could have been, you know? But no, I don't think Tarnish, per se. I think uh, it's just one of these scenarios, which we have had in chess history actually many times, where the strongest player in the world is not necessarily the reigning world champion. Okay, Riemann playing solid. This looks a little bit cramped, though, especially the dark square bishop. I don't really like for, uh, for Riemann. Okay, it's castle. Now, will Riemann go this way? No. Does not go that direction. So, I'm going to play queen d5. A little bit of an aggressive move. But black has to be, or sorry, white rather has to be careful about moving this knight now because of the mate. If knight h4, I can take here. And then if bishop f3, I throw in this check. So I kind of like this from a coordination standpoint. This could be my Scandinavian player instincts kicking in. But it's kind of nice to have that there. Okay, queen d1. What's up with that move? Let's go knight d7. Riemann, don't play knight d2. Don't do it, Riemann. Have you guys seen that viral thing with um, the emu, Emmanuel? Emmanuel, don't do it. That's why I feel like Riemann. Do not, 
Do not go to D2. That won't make any sense to someone who hasn't seen that video, but there's a woman with a, a farm uh, somewhere or works at a farm somewhere here in the U.S., and she has all these interesting animals, including an emu that uh, often tries to get on camera. <laughs> that's right, Ahmad. That's right. Even though it's just Riemann, I can't help it. It's Riemann hypothesis to me. This is tough. This is a tough position for White. They're trying to break out, but this is running into further problems. Now take, and if queen takes, this bishop hangs. Yeah, that, that's, that's right, Bakuz. I'm glad some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, um, I'm very tempted to do this, but there's no follow-up, so let's not do that. Bring the knight into g4. That's the plan. Can take here. I could also, at this point, play this move. Take, take, take e1 at the end. Um, but let's just take the bishop. Now nah, let's... Mm, this actually might be the best move. Let's do it. Check with the discovery. White could have played queen takes e1, but black would have been up a piece in the end. Okay, thanks for the game, Raymond. Kind of a cramped position. I don't think you should play bishop e3 this early. I actually think that is a bit off compared to normal. I have seen people play this setup where they fianchetto the light square bishop. That's usually how white handles it, it seems to me. So I would have done that. Let's consult the database. Let's see. Yeah, g3 is the main move. You can see this really doesn't score that well for black. Uh, for white, rather. The lead chess database is a bit better, but at the master level, which... I think when you guys are looking at openings, this should be your first stop for just getting a bird's eye view of what's going on. The master's database. Those are not percentages you want to see, especially over like a fairly larger sample size. I mean, 138 games, not enormous, but you know, there's been dozens of games played and it just doesn't look like white scores that well, unless you want to go G4, <laughs> which I, I, I'm very suspicious about, but the engine says it's not terrible. Top move, G4. I don't think I would ever think of that move in this position. Wow. And if d5? Take. For some reason, this is good for white. Check. Very alpha zero like g5, you start gaining space, denying black developing moves. Yeah, g4 is not something you play unless you're quite familiar with this position. But maybe, Riemann, you can think about that. The old masters are cringing at a move like that, but who knows? It's a new new age. We have to look at everything objectively. So yeah, I can see why that's useful. All right. Thanks for the game, Riemann. Yeah, I think uh, the position in the middle game is just quite difficult. Maybe around here, you have some sort of better development. Like queen d2 actually didn't really help you. Maybe castle first. I could still play queen d5, but I feel like you can get out of this if you rearrange your pieces a bit. Like even knight e1, yeah, defend here. Probably you want to look for a trade of the light score bishops. Okay, thank you very much. Aryan, I see your challenge. We haven't played for a while, so maybe we'll get a game. Grasuga, you are up. All right, you're a very consistent player. Bring it. Let's do it. All right, let's play d6 in this game. Pierce. I'll go e5. I like this queenless middle game. I got to be honest. I do enjoy playing it, but white doesn't go for it. So we're going to see queens on board. Now, this position looks like black is almost blundering a tactic. I'm going to pre-move this. White can go take a knight g5. However, 
that line is not supposed to work out that well for white. I actually played that one time in a tournament game when I was a kid. But it's not supposed to be great from the white side. C6, so we're just crouching behind the formation. Queen C7. I might look to play with the queen side pawns. The bishop's always a bit buried. But you know what, guys? In a lot of openings, it's, uh, it's possible that the queen side bishop for both players could be developed like far later. That's... um. A thing I've seen in many, many openings. So don't feel like you have to rush a queenside bishop development if it's not clear where it should go or if it literally can't move whatsoever. Hmm. We have some Pierce uh, exponents in the chat. Some of you Pierce players out there. Oh, thank you very much. So how? Thank you for tuning in today. All right, let's take here. I got to break out now a little bit. Should I send the knight to c5 or e5? Bit of a tough call. c5 or e5? I'm going to go to c5. We're going to attack this pawn. I expect white to defend it. Something like rook e1. Yep. All right. Um, this bishop's undefended, so obviously I'm looking at discoveries. I'm even thinking about really interesting stuff. Like, can I go d5 take here? What do we think about that? Uh, it might not work. You might just be able to take on e7. And then sc scamper away with the king. It's kind of cool looking, but I just don't be really believe it. But I really want to play it now that, <laughs> now that I look at it. Um... Yeah, it just doesn't work. It does not work. So I think I might play something like um, bishop g4 or bishop e6 here. h6 maybe. Eh. Let's do this one. I can't lose too much time here. I'm already down almost a minute. Maybe you prepare it with rook e8. Thing is, even rook e8 wouldn't uh, necessarily prepare it, I think. And it would be probably a bit transparent what I was up to. You would attack the bishop and blunder the rest of the game? Yeah, h6, tempting move. Maybe not the best, though. Okay, so he's playing to win a pawn. That's fair. But do I have queen h4? I think I can go queen h4. Maybe he was only reckoning with queen g5. Queen h4, this is a problem for white. So I am going to get at these pawns somehow. Okay, that defends this. Hold up. Man, it's so close. Man, man, man. It's so close to a smothered mate. We don't quite have it, though. I could go here hoping for rook takes, but that's not how you play chess. <laughs> All right, let's think. Think, John. Rook d8 and queen g3. Let's go. Let's take here. Now I got to play really fast. Because my time management has been dismal. I've been babbling too much. Position looks good, though. Position checks out. Mm-hmm. Attack the bishop. C2 has been hanging for a little bit, but I don't know if I want to take it at some point. If I get pushed, I will take it. But we're not going to do it yet.
Okay, let's capture that one. We're playing a bullet game here, folks. I berserked a lot yesterday, though, so I feel, I feel prepared. I feel prepped. Oh, I took my last pawn. I should have kept that pawn. GG, Grasuga. You deserve the draw. <laughs> good fight, good fight. Oh, wait. Actually, I did win. That's right, because this is Lee Chess, and I have mating material. <laughs> Which, that brings up an interesting point. What do you guys think about that rule? Do you prefer the rule where... If your opponent just has their king in a minor piece, for example, king in a minor piece, it's a draw? Or do you prefer it like this, where you could create a mating construction? It's possible for black to checkmate here. What, what is your take on that? Because it differs from server to server, but that's how they do not in Lee Chess. If there's a mating construction, it is a win. Thanks for the game. Wow. Look at all. Wow, we did not get a good report card in this game. You had a 78 average sentry pawn loss. I had a... Oh, it's still calibrating, actually. My mine was terrible. I might have a triple-digit sentry pawn loss here. That's not good. Yeah, I think we both missed a lot of stuff. Wait, you're winning here? Rook take, Why is Rook takes E8 winning? Oh, and then Rook F1, probably. Let's see. Take, take, Rook F1. Yeah, that's 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 trouble, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What about right here? Queen takes F2. Queen takes D6 is the best move. Only move to keep you in the game, according to the engine. And here, it's saying I should do this. I was a bit torn at this point, for sure. I could definitely see how this time scramble was laden with blunders. But thank you for the game. Grasuga, very tough one. Isn't Lee Chess closer to Fide's rules? Yes, that's correct. Pack Islander, you're up. Pacific Islander, good luck to you. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. Are you there, Pack Islander? Guess not. You can always re-challenge. Eric Rosen had a game on chess.com. Profit, good luck to you. Where he had a force mate with only a knight and a king, but the opponent flagged in the game was a draw. Right. Yeah, those freak situations happen sometimes. Yep. I remember on the Internet Chess Club, ICC, it used to be like that too. Happy Accident says, I think it should be a draw. There's more practical chances for a draw than a win in such scenarios. Yeah, that's kind of the argument, isn't it? Because in that game that Grisuga technically lost... It's kind of ridiculous that it's better for Grasuga to have no material, just their king. If they had just their king and I had the king in the knight, that's a draw because I don't have mating material. I can't even set up a mate. But the fact that white has pieces that could get in the way of, a, of a, an extreme circumstance checkmate is what, what sinks them. Okay, this looks a little suspicious for black. Like, I can take and try to go rookie one. Maybe black has one way out of this. I think black actually could have taken with the bishop there, but as played, I think black's going to struggle to keep all this together because the knight is, is pretty hopelessly pinned. Yeah, now I can play a move like this. And there's just loose, loose points galore here. Also threats like F3, perhaps. Uh... Silthio, you can play, you can challenge 3-0 rated or casual. Do not challenge 3 plus 2, though. If it's 3 plus 2, I'll have to decline the challenge. Okay, interesting move here. <clears throat> is if I take, the idea is bishop takes f2. That might be okay for me, but you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm actually just going to reinforce. Because I don't really need my knight to attack e4 per se. I mostly want to go f3 if I'm going to exploit this pin. And this is annoying for black because, again, all the threats are maintained. I'm just reinforcing. Also opening the dark score vision. Yeah, with FIDE rules, there are some weird circumstances where, uh, like, if someone loses on time, but there is no feasible way, even in a seemingly complicated position with material on board, no legal way, I shouldn't even say feasible, no legal way for the other side to win, it can actually be a draw, as weird as that seems. Some of those positions have been posted on Reddit. It's like, it's like a circumstance where one side's moves are entirely forced, and from that four sequence, there's no way for them to win, even if they, they technically flag their opponent. We'll challenge the knight, because I don't want to move this knight and allow queen takes f2. Is it auto draw because of the lone king? Yes, that would be a draw, Steve. Yep. So in that game against Krasuga, if they just had a king, and I had king and knight, and they lost on time, it actually wouldn't even get to that point, because it would be an automatic draw. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to play the England. Yes, I'll try to play that. Okay, we're up a piece here. Just grinding profit down. Thanks, everyone, once again for tuning in. How many viewers do we have? We have 200 on YouTube, about 200 on Twitch as well. Thank you very much. For spending part of your Sunday with us. Shout out to my mom and dad. I think they're watching. They tend to pop in and out of watching on this stream. <laughs> okay, let's go queen c4. Put pressure here and here. I like it. Yes, shout out to them. Now I can take. Any tricks I'm missing here? I don't think so. I mean, rook d2, I can take e4. Just always got to check, you know, if some idea towards your king is going to ever work. But it doesn't look like it. I'll take here. All right. And we're just up a rook for a pawn. Just want to look for trades now. You know, I could trade queens. That's great. Probably both of us will play some sort of pawn move around our king. I'm going to go h3 just to give myself a little bit of a window. Oh, thank you. All right. Thanks for the game, Prophet. Yeah, this line you played, it might work. Like, you might be able to escape with a somewhat worse position. I did think bishop d6. Because do you guys see, let's turn the engine off. What happens on rookie one? How can Black calmly react to rookie one here if I play that move? Maybe I can go queenie two, but let's say rookie one because that move looks obvious. CD Jazz says, my kind of blunder, queen c6. <laughs> oh, thanks, Pizza Racer. Yes, so Thiel, you're right. Black can castle here on rook e1. Just castle, because rook takes e4 is cleverly met by bishop takes h2 check, now that the queen is no longer defended by the rook. So black will win the queen. So that's like a tactical defense black has available. It looks kind of awkward, though. I mean, the structure's bad. Yeah, there's still queen e2. I guess queen e2, queen e7. Then rook e1, maybe. But yes, I would not recommend playing the Berlin this way. If black plays knight f6 here and white castles, black almost invariably takes on e4. That is the mainline Berlin. Again, we can consult the master's database to see that. Occasionally, other moves get played, but knight takes e4 is the critical move. So I would look into that profit if you want to continue playing this line. This is where you see all the draws. This is the go-to high-level draw. Uh, how does it go? d4, knight d6, uh, take... There's other lines too, right? Like this is the main Berlin endgame. 
take, take, take here. Get into this. There's been thousands and thousands of games that have been played with that end game. But the current fashionable high level draw variation, anytime you see the top guys going for this, there's about a 90, 95% chance they're going to make a quick draw. Like this. And then they shuffle the queens back and forth. Check. Or queen e3, whatever. They do this little dance. Look how many games have been drawn this way. There's certain players who love to draw in this way too. I won't call them out because if you look at the database, you can figure it out quite easily. <laughs> it's just like the hint, hint, wink, wink, nod, nod, let's go for the draw type of line, which is often favorable for them, both players like in the tournament standings. Okay, thanks again, Profit, for the game. H. Rod Connie, you're up next. Good luck to you. Have ever played Emery Tate? Yes, I have, actually. I played him, the late Emery Tate, maybe like two or three times over the board. Always a very entertaining player. Yeah, rest in peace to him. Okay, um, I'm going to transpose to a Sicilian. I started with Peertz. Okay, let's take. We got a Cecil. Now, bishop d3 isn't so common. It's it's a fine move, but not too common to block the defense of the knight. So I think knight c6 is, you know, somewhat of the principled way to try to take advantage. All right. Uh, let's play g6. We're going to go for a Fienketto. You want to see a bong cloud on stream? Maybe someday. We do have the final game, which we'll be playing in about 50 minutes. I used to do the Bong Cloud for the final game, but lately I've just been playing Blindfold, which is always a challenge. Okay, White playing solid, but I see some potential avenues for counterplay. This is supported by the Bishop. Blindfold Bong Cloud would be next level. That would be uh, quite the thing to witness if I could do it successfully. All right, so I can get the dark square bishop. I'm very happy about that because my dark square bishop is quite strong, especially when it has no opponent. Let's go here, attack this pawn. I am allowing white to take there, but I'd much rather win the b2 pawn than save my a pawn. Oh, and h rad. Drop the knight. Got to watch those undefended pieces. John, is ICC still around? You still love it. Yes, it's still around. Yep. I log on there every, every once in a while, once in a blue moon. It's kind of like stepping back into a time warp when you're on ICC. <laughs> you see some of the same players, same usernames that were playing on the site 15 years ago. Still pretty much the exact same. Okay, take. I think I can do that because I can win the bishop. It looks a little bit greedy. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to try to keep my... I like my dark square bishop too much. I'm going to try to plant it on d4. Well, now I can go here, though. Get a little fork. If you only play blindfold bong cloud, what would your blitz rating be? Oh, man, that's a great question. I would say probably Lee Chess Blitz. I would say probably like 1,800 maybe. That's my honest answer. Honest ballpark. That's a pretty big disadvantage. I think I could get better at blindfold blitz over time, but 3-0 playing the bong cloud every game, I would say 1,800. Now I can go here. Line up, take the bishop on e2. <laughs> nice polar cow. James, you sent a challenge? Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you guys for challenging. Hello, Tom Walker, by the way. Yeah, I'm usually streaming at this time, every Sunday, for the most part. All right, here I have a force mate. Common pattern with two major pieces on the second rank. You more often see this pattern with two rooks. So, like, the other rook coming over for checkmate. 
with this square taken away, but this is a common pattern as well. Yes, thank you for the game. Pretty solid play by you, Atrad. It's just uh, that knight. You, you know, your intentions were good here. You saw the threat on the B-pawn, and you tried to defend by pushing here, but it created a bigger problem, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think you should play something like Rook B1 at this point. You can still keep your eye on this pawn, but probably Rook B1 is the way to go. Thank you for the game. Yeah, blind swine mate, exactly, with the two rooks down there. Mr. Dr. Prof Spooky Pants. Okay, good luck to you. Let's play. I said I was going to play a Dutch, so let's go for it against d4. Uh, let's play d5 here. Clamp down on the e4 square. Now, strategically speaking, this already feels a little suspect to me because the eye of the two pawns is weak. We've talked about this many times. I talked about it in the very first game today, actually, briefly. But that, that point in between the two pawns is, is something that white can think about using. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to allow white to take the bishop pair if they want. But I can shore things up. I can fight back on the dark squares now. Okay, bishop there. Um, let's go knight c6. I'm not really afraid of check. I'll just play g6 against that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can go quick knight b5 in this line, absolutely. I do recommend this knight c3 line in my uh, chessable course, my free chessable course on d4. f3, that looks a little odd. All right, let's just castle. Because it's not like white can easily play e4 here, so that's why I'm skeptical of this. Now, when the opponent is doing something on the wings, like some sort of wing demonstration, I'm very tempted to attack in the center, always. So I'm thinking about e5. I'm also thinking about this move. Let's play this one because I want to see how Dr. Prof Spooky Pants deals with the slight tender situation here. Bishop g5 could be played, but maybe I shoot the queen out here, attack b2, something along those lines. What's up, Noya Deer? How many games of chess have you played in your life? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I'm going to ballpark and say 50,000. Oh, did I make a mistake? I think I actually just made a big mistake. Well, maybe not. Knight f2 would have been interesting there. Knight f2, and my queen and my knight would have been awkward, but I could play kind of like that very first game. Knight takes f4 might bail me out, because if rook takes, I take check, circle back, take the rook. We'll look at that after the game, though. Okay, now... Should I take that or no? Yeah, let's take. And then I'm going to drop back here probably. Okay, so white's building up some pressure against this pawn. Makes sense. I'm going to go h6 just to make sure nothing bad happens there. I might be able to take this. Um... Mm, I don't like it, though. I don't quite trust it. I was thinking if take, go here, because queen takes knight d3. But the thing is, I'm a little worried about this move. Queen e5, f4, some weird situation like that. Let's just go here. I'm going to try for e5. Hello, QE. Uh, yes, feel free to challenge. You can challenge me. What's up, Jobius? I have 17,000 games on chess.com and Lee Chess combined. Oh, I'm surprised you looked that up so fast. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, I played a lot more games on ICC back in the day, so I think my 50,000 figure actually sounds right in my head, roughly. I mean, I know players who have played hundreds of thousands of games. This is going to be a rude awakening for... <laughs> Prof Spooky Pants. They did not see my queen defending. Almost guaranteed. I like the gusto, though. They went for my king. They took their chance. It didn't work out, but I like that. When you're playing against a higher-rated player, it's best to swing for the fences in as reasonable a manner as you can. But definitely attack. All right, thank you for the game. 
Let's see that one moment where I took that pawn on h4. Yeah, knight f2 was good here. So the engine does not like this move. It says I should play in the center, e5. What about this move? I also thought about e5 here. Might be the better plan. But the backward knight move strikes again. This is nice for white because it attacks my queen. And the rook is defended. And I can't move the queen somewhere safely where the knight will also be defended behind. So I'd have to go for this again. Get another like knight situation where I have to sack my queen. And then, yeah, you got to step here because if you go here, I take this one and circle back. So this produces kind of a position similar to the game, except I've lost my queen. Material-wise, black is fine here, but the engine gives an edge to white, probably because white is better coordinated for now. But yeah, black does have a rook, a knight, and two pawns for the queen. But interesting, the engine says white's doing pretty well. <clears throat> I believe that. I do believe that, because I think black's going to have a hard time with their king if white plays this right. Thanks for the game. Oh, that was you, B. Bernie. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for the game. I didn't check the auto analysis, but I should have about the Dutch. We'll go back and look at that. Ooh, a lot of questions in the chat here. Uh, do you think attacking style is naturally just better? Um, I would say if you know how to do it in a controlled fashion, then it's a great style to have, yeah. Uh, let's check real quick. What does the auto analysis think of the Dutch? What? What? The Dutch, the, distri the disrespect from the auto analysis to the Dutch. It's confirmed. Scandinavian is better than Dutch. <laughs> I wonder if the threshold is uh, something that moves the needle more than half a pawn. It's, it goes from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.6. So I wonder if that's the threshold, at least in the opening, that Lee Chess has. That feels wrong. It feels wrong that the Dutch gets the dubious mark, whereas the Scandinavian passes with an acceptable move. Maybe it changes from analysis to analysis. Who knows? Yeah, Simon Williams somewhere is deeply disrespected. <laughs> Okay, Porifera. Let's do this. I'll play Knight F3 this game. I'm looking at some other questions here. John, if your opponent plays one E6 against one E4, do you go into a French or stick in D4 territory? I usually stick in D4 territory. Yeah, I'll play C4 there. Um, as someone who is almost a lawyer, do you have any thoughts on Stockfish versus chess base? Well... It's, it's too kind of you to say I was almost a lawyer. I was in law school for one semester, which puts me very far away from being a lawyer. <laughs> uh, I would say read the, uh, the blog post article. There's a blog post article here on Lee Chess about that case. And I think No Joke Chess wrote it. It's very thorough. Go ahead and read that. But yeah, there are some legal wranglings going on with that case. Let's go here. We'll see if Black wants to go G5. Thanks again, B. Bernie, for that game. Uh, Ear Jibs asks, Hi, John, I have a question for you. Who is your favorite player? And it can be historically or currently. Yeah, you know, currently, definitely Magnus is my favorite player. Historically, I've learned a lot from the games of Kramnik and Karpov. I like Capablanca a lot, too. Tall's games, even though I play nothing like Mikhail Tall, his games always fascinated me, too. So I would go with those players. Play bishop d3. Have I earned the GM yet? I have not. We were talking about that a little earlier. I'm thinking about making a push for it. I only have one GM norm, so it weighs away. Can I expand on when the opponent plays in the center, or on the wings, you attack in the center? Yeah, that's just uh, generally accepted wisdom. Let's sack. Let's go for it. That's the wisdom when that circumstance arises, because... If they're trying to play on the side of the board and they already are like pushing pawns aggressively, it's usually not in your best interest to try to fight back. You're often best off just trying to create problems for them elsewhere, elsewhere create counterplay elsewhere, and the center tends to be the place. Maybe the other wing, especially in an opposite, opposite side castling situation, but usually the center. Yep, 
Yeah, that's right, James. Stockfish, Stockfish said no Dutch. Do you have any tattoos? If you were to get a chest tattoo, what would it be? I do not have any tattoos. Ooh, this is an inconvenient move for black. If I were to get a chest tattoo, what would I do? Um, you know, I would probably get like a uh, pawn tattoo if I were to choose a piece. Because pawns have all the potential, right? So I think that would be cool. A lot of people get knights, kings, queens. I feel like I would do pawn. Yeah, Scandinavian pond configuration. <laughs> one, e one E4 best move confirmed, right? <laughs> yeah, D4 was just 0, 0.0 according to the engine. Just completely dead equal. That was funny. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to try to play E4. So we have an interesting imbalance in this situation. It's like black has castle queenside now. I don't know who's better here. I think this is a position that could go either way. I mean, I have a rook and two pawns, but black has all those minor pieces. Uh, the position's probably about balanced, I would say. I'm going to try to really stuff this bishop. We're going to go here. Time's going to catch up to both of us pretty soon. There is this annoying pin that black has to deal with, so I don't know. If I were black, I'd probably talk to king. Queen h5. Okay, black trying to force a queen trade, which I think I do have to acquiesce to. Let's do it. I'll go g3. Doesn't exactly stop knight f4, but I'll tuck the bishop in here. This is one of these positions. The more pieces that come off the board, the more I like white's position. Um, because the pawns can can have more weight. But with the pieces on board, as, as in the current situation, black can try for counterplay. They can try to be annoying, use the activity of the miners. The minor pieces are pretty annoying if they coordinate. Okay, check, come here. Eh, I don't know about that. Let's just go here. So I'm, I'm trying to start advancing these pawns and be irritating. Let's go here. Nice pawn chain. We like that chain. Let's do this one. I might play bishop f1 if I get the chance. We'll see. I'm really looking for a chance to play d6, which now might be the time, huh? Look at that chain. Connect five. <laughs> Look at that beautiful pawn chain. Oh, I can roll them all. F5 and then E6. I almost don't even want to take, but I'm going to. Mm-hmm. And now I think just push. Check. King D8, E7. Pawns are unstoppable. Too much. Too much pawn action. I have mate in two here. All right. Thank you for the game, Profera. GG. Let's take a look at that middle game. I'm intrigued, like right about here. I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet the evaluation is slightly, slightly, slightly in Black's favor, like minus 0.2 or something. Let's see. What do you guys think? Ooh, it's close. Equality. It's just equal. I don't know. In a blitz game, I think I would take Black here. Especially if black tucks their king away. If black keeps the king safe, I feel like white's going to have some stuff to deal with around the king. But the engine just says equal. Everything's a draw. <laughs> it actually didn't like that queen trade. That's interesting. I mean, that, that maybe stands to reason because, again, if you're the side with the minor pieces here, you're facing all those pawns. You just had that pawn deficit. You do want to keep pieces on board because the closer you get to an end game, the more those pawns are going to matter. I think my sacrifice was probably a bit dubious. Yeah, the engine, it doesn't absolutely hate it. It still gives an edge to white, but it says bishop g3 or like taking here. Oh, even bishop takes g5. Okay, that's a version of it I didn't think about. But now that I see that on board, that makes more sense. I think the knight is annoying. It has a lot of options here. 
Okay, thanks for the game, Prof Profera. Uh, I don't know about the Fianchetto, by the way, with the bishop out here on b4. I'm a little skeptical of that configuration, personally. Thank you very much. Derek says, another Sunday already. These years are flying by. How are you today, John? I know, right? Um, let's play Alakine's defense. I think I've been doing Lee Chess plays for over a year now. Like, solidly over a year. Probably more like, I don't know, 14 months, maybe? He's 14 months. I sound like one of those parents with a newborn. Like, how old is your kid? They could just say he's a year. Like, oh, no, he's, like, he's 14, 15 months. <laughs> All right, anti-classical. Oh, it's also appropriate I'm playing an Alakine's defense against a player with anti-classical in their username. Hypermodern opening. Hello, Aditya on YouTube asks, Hi, John. Happy weekend. Yes, same to you. What are your thoughts about Magnus's decision? You know, it's pretty disappointing, I would say, just from a uh, fan standpoint. I think most everyone agrees with that. I do understand his reasoning. You know, he's he's talked about it for a while. We can't say that he didn't hint at it. Um, I was definitely in the camp where I thought... I w How should I put this? I thought there was a chance that he would eventually come to the decision that he did. But I thought it would be after all the details for a potential match were hashed out, all the sponsors were in order, Fide had presented a proposal to him and Nepo, and it was time to you know really make that decision. I didn't think he would come out now and say that he's not going to defend. Which, by the way, like technically I think he isn't on the hook for that. I think Fide still has to go through the motions of presenting a proposal to him. It's kind of like when... Uh, Elon was apparently going to buy Twitter, and now that idea, uh, that deal has a very good chance of falling through. It's like a complete court battle at this point. <laughs> you could have some situation like that where Magnus decides, you know what? Actually, I, about that world championship retirement thing, I don't want to do that. I want to fight for it. I don't think there's anything stopping him from doing that. Um, but to your overall question... I had read some stuff, especially from this Norwegian chess journalist, Tarjai Svensson, that it was unlikely Magnus would play against Nepo if the format was not changed. But I didn't fully think that that would come to light so quickly, if it were true. And I think the Ferruja thing, where, I shouldn't even say Ferruja, but Magnus saying uh, a while back, months ago, that he might only be interested in defending his world championship if it was from if the challenger was from the next generation, so people, you know, kind of presumed Ferruja from that. Um, I think that's such a wild card statement to make too that I think it's only natural people are going to question and have questioned if Magnus was actually serious about that whole thing. So I know some people are in the like I told you so camp, just listen to Magnus all along. But you gotta admit, like that was such a wild card statement. And you know, he was asked even while the candidates was going on, what's your decision going to be? And he said, we'll see. So I, I don't think you can also claim that Magnus was being 100% transparent about his decision making. You know, like there were moments where he could have clarified this much further in advance, let's say. Which I don't fault him one way or the other. It's totally his prerogative. And again, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll wake up and, and decide he wants to play. <laughs> We can dream, right? What do you guys think, though? I think most people are kind of sad about the decision, though. That's that's pretty natural, right? We know Magnus is the best. We want to see him continue to prove it. Another match with Nepo would be really interesting, I think. I know it would be tough, but I think it would be very, very interesting for the, the chess public. I'm trying to maneuver here, put pressure on, on uh, White's position. This feels a little more comfortable for me, but um, I'm working hard here trying to prove it. Let's go Rook D7. Defend. Fire says, I want Ding to win now. Interesting. Ooh, C6, I don't think it's so great. I can take. Which way shall I take? Let's take with the pawn. 
And now I get to straighten out my pawns. That might have been a time pressure induced decision there. Okay, let's take this. We're just going to wreck white structure now. Completely wreck it. Infiltrate with the rook. Watch for the blind swine. The rook's on the seventh. It might come into the picture here, here, here. Yeah, white just resigns. This was looking really tough. Losing endgame. Thanks for the game, anti-classical. I think this position might be close to level. Tiny, tiny bit better for black, but pretty close to level. I think the early B3, not something you usually see here. Typically, white's going to advance C5. I would have sent the knight into C4 there. I'm not a huge Alakine's defense player, so I actually didn't even play the best move here. Knight C6 is played more often. Probably because D5, there's knight A5. Uh-huh, and then you go after this. Speaking of Magnus, Magnus has played this position before. So maybe B3 is just not the best, and maybe you should take the space and go after the knight. I don't know, though. This position, actually totally okay for you. Better. Take, take, queen a4. Uh-huh. This might be a better version of the game because the light square bishop could be annoying for me. I don't know. Let's just play out some moves here. Yeah, at some point, your bishop can probably attack my queen. As opposed to the game where the light square bishops got traded, and you can see how the queen was quite secure on d5. I think that's a key difference there. GG. Thank you very much. Okay, checkmate 3141. 2327. All right, high rated player. Let's play e4. We played multiple times. Ooh. Yeah, we. Okay, I got to be on my game here. Let me think what line I'm going to play. Let me play knight f3 and knight c3. We'll play this kind of maneuvering type variation. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm going to sack a pawn. We're going to go for a pawn sack. Doesn't take it, though. Plays solid. All right. This reminds me a lot of a Scandi. Big time Scandi vibes from this. Let's go Bishop F4. I'm tempted to castle queenside. I might do it. Let's see. Will I get a chance, though? That's a key question, because queen D5 could be played here. Okay, no queen d5 yet. Mm. It's lurking, though. I know from experience, queen d5 is lurking. Okay, let's go here. I, I want to stop queen d5 so much, I'm willing to play this move. I'm willing to give it a shot. Chess.com raid? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, A5 is a good move. All right. I'm, I'm going to admit that my plan of castling queenside probably just isn't feasible. <laughs> Chess.com raid. <laughs> That's a random thing in the chat. <laughs> I mean, if I was running on running chess.com, I don't think I would really care about Lee Chess, or at least about the perceived competition of Lee Chess. But I know that they run their business in a different way, and they have their reasons. But I think for any chess business, for profit, Lee Chess is just a great addition to the ecosystem and just a real uh, joy to have around. Like, if you like chess, I think you should like Lee Chess. It's, it's a wonderful uh, site, an asset to the chess community. Okay, real maneuvering position here. Let's play. I don't know if I want to play that move, though. Let's go here. I'm going to try to postpone a decision about whether to play a3 or not. This is tough to break down, though. Not going to lie, guys. Very tough to break this down. We got to take our time.
White always has this like nagging advantage though. That's the thing about these positions. Black has to be super patient. It's often in Black's best interest just to sit there and do nothing. Try not to weaken themselves. Like now my opponent's maybe trying to get into C4 with the knight. Which might be overplaying their hands slightly. We'll see though. Let's bring this back. Because now I have B3 with tempo at some point. Okay, yeah, Black's trying to force things, I think, a little too much. Because this pawn becomes a bit more vulnerable. You see how the knight, in essence, was directed away from the d5 square? That's the risk that you run with doing something like this. Still difficult, though. Still very tough. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to send this in now. I got to watch the time a little bit. Send that bad boy in. Okay. All right, I guess I'll take. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Attack that knight. Okay, time to break through. Or attempt to break through. It's getting tense. It's getting tense, folks. Let's guard this square. Now, I want to round up one of these pawns. Still quite tricky to do. Pull this back. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go here. I need to play faster. Battle the pawns. Whose pawns are stronger? Maybe my opponents. Maybe. Ah, yeah, yeah. GG. That was a good game, checkmate. Uh, my opponent's pawns were stronger in the end. That was nice. Rook D2, I think I might just be losing here. Yeah, I don't have a good way to stop. Oh, I could have taken and played Rook D7. That was the way to play. It was rated. Yeah, my rating, my poor rating. Checkmate is very tough. Take and rook d7. Only way to... Well, maybe not the only way. Wait, what did I miss here? b6. That's what I played, right? Oh, now rook c7. That's tricky. Leave the rook hanging. He did farm me. He farmed my rating. <laughs> no, that was legit. That was a good game. I think that was pretty well played by both sides, given the time control. Um... I don't know. I felt like I was getting advantage in the middle game, but maybe it wasn't anything. Actually, the engine says no. Yeah. Because these situations are rather delicate. They can go either way. Because black is maneuvering, trying to induce weaknesses. White is trying to gradually push forward, but creating weaknesses in their wake. It's tough. Ah, d5. d5 would have been nice here. I think the point of that is black can't take this way because of the pin. And if take here, bishop g4. Oof, nice. Good game, good game. Definitely the best game of the day. Congrats to checkmate. I get taken down with 20-some minutes remaining in our stream. I'm below 2,600 now. That's very sad. <laughs> M. Schaffman, are you there? We've played once before. All right. Let's go on to the next game. Boy K Jr., good luck to you. Let's play E4. Yeah, 
Yeah, I use both sites as well. I like both chess.com and Lee Chess. Absolutely. Let's play a two nights or four nights defense, maybe. Yep, four nights. Or three nights, I guess, is what I should have said, not a two nights. How many nights are there? <laughs> I don't know about A6. A6, I might be able to try to win this pawn. There is this idea take, and then knight takes e4. Does it work here, though? Does it actually work? I'm not sure. I think it's quite risky. Yeah, because queen d4, now I can retreat and attack the queen. <laughs> nice, Flintlock. Hello, checkmate. Yeah, rook c7 in that last game, Max, would have been nice. There were, there were a couple very tricky tactical details there. Okay, castle. Yep, so black just has to agree to play this position down a pawn. This is what's going on here. I'll play h3. We'll just restrict the light square bishop. Black does have the bishop pair, but it's not that open of a position. The pawns in the center control a lot of territory. Um, let's push. Could also try bishop g5, but I prefer pushing. Hmm. Now I might take this one. Let's take this. Do you ever stream or play Fisher Random? Not really. I had a match one time in Fisher Random against John Ludwig Hammer. That was kind of interesting. But no, I very rarely stream it. Or play it. I don't have much interest in it, to be honest. It kind of just frustrates me. <laughs> like, I look at the starting positions, and I'm thinking, why are these pieces in such awkward setups? That said, if you guys follow uh, Grandmaster Matthew Sadler, really strong English Grandmaster, um, he has a strong interest in computer chess, engine chess, uh, AI. He's written about Alpha Zero before. And he, he actively posts about the um, TCEC tournament, which is like the ongoing computer de facto world championship, basically. And I think they're doing a 960 tournament right now, or it's part of their regular cycle. They get into some really fascinating situations. So I read his posts every once in a while about it. John, have you heard about the poor seven-year-old with the broken finger? I heard something vaguely about that. Like, it was playing against one of those chess robots, and the chess robot broke the seven-year-old's finger. Is that literally what happened? I mean, I could see it. Those things are... Like, that old video I saw of Vladimir Kramnik playing that thing, it moves pretty aggressively. Oh, hey, Pat. Yeah, game changer. That's a great one. Okay, I think this move wins now because I'm going to get to the back rank. Rookie six. This king is looking a little shaky. Ah, maybe it's not completely winning yet because black will take this pawn, but I don't think black's going to be able to defend around their king. I will have to think how best to finish this off, though. It's not super simple. How do I accept challenges? I have an accept random challenge button that I use. Okay. Yeah, Vogue just resigns. However, you could keep playing here. I mean, queen up, check, king takes pawn. Where is my absolute knockout? I'm not quite seeing it. I was probably just going to go here and try to get into f6. Uh, although then you can maybe take here. Uh, I guess this wins, though. Some sort of deflection on your queen. Yeah, so probably it is winning, but there's a couple details I would have had to put together there. So maybe maybe it's worth playing out for a couple moves. Hey, Penguin GM won with the raid here on the official Twitch Lee Chess channel. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, shout out to Andrew Tang, Grandmaster Tang. Um, he is a longtime proponent of Lee Chess. He's frequently playing on here. He has some legendary videos. Go check out his channel. And I haven't seen you much, Andrew. 
I haven't seen you uh, stream a whole lot lately, so good to see you back out there playing some Blitz, Bullet, whatnot. Much appreciated. Thanks for rating the official channel here. We're just doing Lee Chess Plays. This is a weekly event where I play players for two hours in 3 plus 0 Blitz. Anyone can challenge. And we're kind of coming up on the end of it, so we're probably only going to get maybe three more games in. But feel free to challenge if you want to send fins. If you want to send me a challenge. Tang is a bullet beast. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is super strong in all forms of online chess and regular chess. Play Tang in one game. I already lost a checkmate. I don't know if I want to lose to Andrew now. <laughs> Jason Sunshine says, I agree with John. In the video of Grishuk blitzing against one of those robots, it moves very aggressively, very close to the human. Right. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't have sensors that... Um, I'm going to give Black this pawn. Pretty sure it doesn't have sensors that indicate if a human hand is present on the board. If it happened in the U.S., I'm sure there would be a big lawsuit that uh, the parents of that seven-year-old could open up against <laughs> the chess robot creators. <laughs> I don't know where it happened. I'm, certain, I'm sure some of you guys know. Was it in Russia? Because I think I've seen those bots in like Russian events before, hence why like Kramnik played against it, Grishuk. It was in Moscow. Mm. Okay, now I can take E6. At the Moscow Open. Uh huh. There's a famous picture of Grishuk getting freaked out when the robot moves very aggressively towards him. Yeah, and that was years ago too, right? Like I think those videos have been around for quite a while. So I wonder how much of this changed or if... They've just like updated the engine that it's using. I mean, those videos are at least five years old. Okay. That's probably a good move. I like that move. What about E5? E5, inviting the capture. Let's do it. This looks interesting, because if here, very tempting move, bishop d2 nicely takes care of things. And I defend the rook. They said later that the kid wasn't following the safety rules. They put a seven-year-old next to a robot and expect him to remember safety. <laughs> yeah. I think if uh, seven-year-olds are involved, like you gotta, you basically, you gotta kid-proof it, you know? Okay, good move here. Probably just castle at this point. I think just castle. If knight takes, I can play stuff like queen h5. If queen d5, I get the royal fork. So it's hard to deal with this knight. I mean, black might attack it in some capacity, but it's just annoying sitting there, preventing castling, leaving black guessing about where it's going to go. Okay, knight takes pawn. Queen e1 is kind of a nice move here. It looks weird. Same with queen d2, but very annoying. I could give that check. I'm just looking at the follow-ups. Uh, I'm not seeing like a super good follow-up to that. Knight c5. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with this one. I just want to see how black reacts to that. Maybe this was more accurate for this. Probably was, actually. But that's okay. You're in the queue for quite a long time. Yeah, apologies. I can't play everyone, unfortunately. There's just too many challenges. But I do appreciate your guys' patience. Let's take the rook. So black played b6 to defend their queen, like anticipating I'm going to take somehow. But too little too late. Yeah, that, that position was too tough. Thank you for the game, Badger. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. 
Knight BD7, not the best move here. It's sort of like a semi-slav type move. Hey, Finvar gifting five subs to the Lee Chess channel. Look at that. Thank you very much for Finvar for the support. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all you patrons, too. That's what the wings next to your name mean. So Badger89 is a Lee Chess patron. Thank you very much, Badger. Yeah, so this whole way of playing, I think you should probably take back this way, Badger, but I would recommend either E6 or taking on C4. E6 is the semi-slav. This is the slav. You can even play A6 as a move, but, you know, like E6, probably the most popular line here. That's a better, more flexible way of playing the position. Where did you go wrong? Well, I think around here, probably bishop e6 is really not the right approach. Yeah, engine agrees. You might be able to take this pawn. I know that looks kind of scary, but I think that's probably the way to go. I was planning this, attacking here, but you can come back. You can defend. Bishop e6, your structure does get so wrecked. I think the position's beyond saving already after this move. So thank you. Oh, strange quirk. Also... Uh, subbing with that prime. Thank you very much. All right. I think we have time for two more games, guys. Mr. Bads, you're up. Let's play B3 in this game. I have not played any Nims or Larson. Hey, John. Queen H5 with the queen hanging on A5. I thought about that idea a few times in that game, but with the pawn on E5 blocking, I didn't see any follow-up there. Are you there, Mr. Bads? All right, we'll go on to the next game. JD, another patron. Look at that. Good luck to JDS31. If you're there. All right, another English. Uh, let's play E5. Should I play a reversed Smith Mora? Let's attempt it. A reverse Smith Mora gambit. A lot of people play G3 here. Yeah, hard to play a reverse with Smith Mora against Knight F3. So we're going to be playing something a little more mainstream. Yeah, E3. I don't know the theory of this line too well. I got to be honest. I'm going to go Bishop B4. We'll play it Nimzo style. Queen B3. Okay, let's castle. This bishop's defended. Well, I could maybe try to get fancy and do that, but I don't, I don't believe that that's going to be... Um, too detrimental to my chances. Takes with a pawn. Interesting. Okay, let's go d6. So yeah, this really might shape up to be somewhat of a Nimzo Indian type position. I'm going to play accordingly. We're going to Fianchetto the light square bishop. Now, given the way the game has played out, I think I'm actually going to go here. Maybe I want to resolve this situation first. Like push first? Hmm... Now, nah, I better start with this move. Let's start with this one just to keep this very well defended. And I think now I'm going to go here. And we're going to play for uh, pressure on the C4 pawn. That's what we're going to do. I should really play these structures more often because I do like this intuitively. I like this for black. But I'm not a big Nimzo Indian player. I've never really had that opening in my repertoire. And this reminds me a lot of a Nimzo where black has given... The dark square bishop for the knight, but doubled these pawns. How many of you guys play this? The Nimzo system. My only beef with the Nimzo is that if you want to play Nimzo, you got to be ready for knight f3 and g3 on move three as well. So like Catalan and also those flexible knight f3 approaches. That's my only misgiving about playing it. It increases the amount that you have to know. Why Skolmo says never. <laughs> Fair enough. How many games will I play more? Probably just one more. Yeah, we're coming up towards the end of the stream. Probably just one more. But it could be you. And it's going to be a blindfold game. I can tell you that. It's going to be blindfold. Okay, let's take. I'm up upon here with a very good position. Good knight versus a bad bishop as well. Pawns on dark squares. That's kind of nice. I might move some of them off, though. Okay. Yeah, let's go d5. I like this move. This knight can pivot back here, potentially, which I might do now just to stop any c4 attempt. I think that's a nice destination square. 
Is it horsey time? Well, it's going to be a blindfold game, but if you want to use the horse, horsey set to observe it, uh, by all means, feel free. <laughs> okay, this is a very depressing position for white. White can barely move. I'm going to start trying to expand. Total blockade of the queen side. And I think I can, therefore, expand pretty comfortably. Um, I'm already thinking about breakthrough type stuff, but it seems unnecessary. Let's just play g5. We're going to get all the pawns up. We're going to shift everything up. Now, I was just about to say, it's logical for white to fight back or attempt to fight back here, but you really got to be careful about ideas like that. Because you might make things worse. Okay, F4 I actually like. F4 I think is a good approach. Let's go here. Now, do not play bishop e1. You play bishop e1, you're going to... Okay, bishop c1, more acceptable. I think white is maneuvering in a wise way. Let's go here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep the tension for now. Maybe like here. Let's do that. Defend this pawn a little bit better. Keeping all my options open. Let's go here. I think probably queen h5 will be played. I wonder if I can slam the door on the queen, though, at that point. Might be a good time to play g4. Yeah. I think now we slam the door, cut off the queen's escape, and this pawn is vulnerable. Like playing on all parts of the board. Okay. That doesn't do much, though. It doesn't change much. Could play g3, but I feel like it's better to take or just allow the allow the capture. Let's take. Take off another pawn. Okay, I'm going to come back. Just defend this, overprotect that. Mm -hmm. I can capture. Okay, okay. Let's go here. Just trade down. Just textbook stuff. Advance. Oh, that was actually hanging. Hey, I got the H-pawn too. <laughs> Watch for Rosen traps. Watch for them. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for the game, JDS. Thank you, GG. Yeah, just a very tough position for you to play when um, you lose that pawn on C4. So I, I think early on, your decision to play, whoa, Castle is a really bad move. Is that because the knight takes E5? Wow, knight takes E5 is actually good here. Okay, I'll have to remember that. It's a deflection. I thought I could take here, but I think. The point is white just plays queen takes. So, yeah, I think definitely the early stage of the game, I do not like B takes C3 at all. Engine also hates it. Wow, already minus two here. So I just think strategically this is a, a tough sell. That's good to know about the knight takes E5 idea, though. Queen B3. Because we're um, still in book here. But it looks like I should take here right away. Okay, good to know. Or play D6, maybe. All right, thank you for the game. Now, let's um, play our final game. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We're playing one more game here, so don't leave quite yet. Blindfold. Now, if you want to see... Oh, boy. This is tough. At least I have the white pieces. Okay, Schrodinger's queen. Frequent opponent here. 22-23. It's a casual game. Let's go. If you want to follow the game... Uh, and see the pieces, check out Fins. Follow Fins. No Joke Chess putting the link in the chat. Thank you, No Joke Chess. Good to see you, by the way. Haven't seen you otherwise this stream. Castle. All right. I'm just playing a setup I'm comfortable with here. It's a Grunfeld. I cannot fall too far behind on the clock. That's just huge. This is a tough opponent for me, even with uh, sight of the board. <laughs> 
So let's see what we can do. Just defending the center. Okay, fine. Retreat the bishop. This is all standard stuff, by the way. Let's see if Schrodinger takes on d4 or plays something else. You know what kills me in these games is the time scrambles. If it's even-ish and it gets into a time scramble, watch out, because I'm going to be furiously clicking, trying to figure out where I can put pieces. <laughs> Rook e8. That move looks a little odd. I don't like that move for black. Let's go here. Black seems kind of cramped now. Bishop e6. Hmm. In front of the pawn, huh? All right, let's go d5. Bishop a6 now comes to mind for sure. Also knight d4. Let's go bishop a6. Because since black's already played this move, I can deny the rook the c8 square. Hmm. Offers a trade. Logical. I'm going to go queen here. Pre-move the capture. We could get some sort of simplification. Okay, e6. Should I take? That seems to open things up a little bit. Maybe I take and then play d6. Let's do that. Let's capture now. I'm going to assume rook takes, yeah. And now let's go d6. There's been some trades. I think I still see the position pretty clearly in my head. I'm doing okay on the clock. I wish I was ahead, but the position looks pretty good. Queen d7. Okay. Mm. Let's go F4. I'm trying to support this pawn. Tricky business. Plays E5. Yeah, that's a good move, I think. Hmm. Okay, let's take this one. Then take here. Ant anticipating bishop takes e5. Okay, bullet game now. This is where it gets really tough. It goes back. Hmm. Interesting move. That might be good. Okay, let's play queen up. Knight takes... Probably bishop d4 now. Attack the knight. Queen e6 offers a trade. Um, Knight here. I have fork ideas. There's a 97 idea in the air. Okay, you ready for this? This might be a crazy idea, but I'm going to do it. I'm not taking that knight. I know my bishop's hanging, but I have a fork. I hope that this gains me time. I think that's actually the best move, which is pretty sick if that's true, because 97 is a big-time threat. I might lose a time scramble, but I have conviction about that. Um,
He went king f8. Yep. And now e7 is rolling through. Resigns. I think I got a respect resignation, but d7 was coming. On bishop here, I think I can play... I think I throw in a check first. And that probably is winning because I'm eventually going to promote. But it's tricky. It's a little bit tricky. Oh, we win. Thanks for the game, Schrodinger's queen. If, if king h1 is best, I'm going to be very pleased. Yes. Because it's, uh, it's a double attack on d4. It's check. So, I mean, it seems like I should take. But it's more important, actually, to maintain the threat of check and not allow black to take me with, with check themselves. Looks like other moves are still good. Wow. Yeah, 97, also best. Nice, nice. Oh, easiest, I guess, after this would be um, to take. Oh, I, my bishop's here. Actually, in my head, I hallucinated and thought the bishop was there at the very end. At the very, very end. So d7 is, in fact, winning because this. Awesome. Well, I had a 36 average centipon loss. I'll take it. I will take it. Thanks to the game, Schrodinger's queen. The game reached kind of a boiling point around here. I thought bishop takes e5 to try to go here. I was going to play queen d5 against this. Bishop f4 is evidently better. Wait, you can do this? Why? I thought e5 was working here. Knight c4. Wow. I thought e5 and I would win the piece. Knight c4, though, counterattack. And also hit this. That's a nice move. And if here, probably knight takes e5. Yes, because if take, then check and win the queen. That's, that's a lot for a blitz game. Yeah, this was not perfectly played, but I am very happy about king, H, king h1. Okay, maybe king f2 is even better. We might need the engine to think for a while on that one. <laughs> but if we take, take here, for instance, check, that slows white down. Black has a chance to maybe start trying to top, stop the pawn. All right, that was a lot of fun. Thank you guys to see a few questions. I'm going to wrap this up because we are over time. About blindfold, I would say blindfold is not something I personally practice, but um, you know, you do get better at it over time just from playing lots of games. But you can try to practice it if you want. All right, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. This is Lee Chess Plays. Always a blast. If you didn't get a game, our apologies. You can challenge again, again next week. Also, Sabina does Lee Chess Plays regularly, during, usually during the week, so you can challenge her as well. Thanks again to Lee Chess and all the mods. We are rating Thinker Teacher.